Welcome to another special episode of Door Hardware Nerds. Today, we have a very special guest in celebration of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We have our Director of Cyber and Information Security on with us. Okay, next one. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's this thought process that because corporations are big and their budgets are big, they can create these strong, incredible cyber programs that can't be defeated. And what we know from reality is our human beings are going to be the reason that all comes crumbling down, right? The human element is the most critical. And to be honest, if I was an attacker, I'm probably not going to try to defeat your firewalls. I'm probably going to send a phishing email or make a phone call and try to be really nice and persuasive and ask someone for their password and they'll probably give it to me, which is frightening and what keeps me up at night <laughs> because that's really what happens in real life. And there's so many YouTube videos of people calling an IT admin and actually getting them to fall for, oh yeah, sure, I'll give you that information. And you're just like, oh no, <laughs> please don't do that. But uh, yeah, it's why user cybersecurity awareness training is so critical. The human beings everywhere in your organization are critical to your success in trying to to actually defend your environment. Your corporation is only as strong as its weakest link, right? Absolutely. And scary what these like professional, like social engineer hackers can do with just Absolutely. a little bit of information. They can really warm up and build rapport really quickly or have enough urgency in those moments to like make you want to give them the information or a very well-worded or crafted email goes mm -hmm. along to making people do things that they probably shouldn't do. So yes, that education is key, I think, right there. Yeah, and it's funny to think about this because we don't think about ourselves as computer systems, right? And we think about Microsoft or some of the other popular operating systems and they have vulnerabilities. And so an attacker tries to take advantage of those vulnerabilities. Well, human psyche has some vulnerabilities too. And social engineers are just taking advantage of that particular weakness in how we're wired to make us take actions that just don't help us. Exactly. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> Out there. Yeah, be careful out there. Absolutely. Okay, the next one. <laughs> That's just <laughs> cruel. <laughs> This particular one is just really, really cruel. It's like I already included a report phishing button, right? So you're going to click report phishing because, hey, your CISO told you to do that. You know, we've been training you guys and here you are trying to do the right thing and you click on it in the wrong section and then this happens. Goodness gracious, that is insidious. Funny, but insidious. Very, very alarming. If this is out there for real, that would be tough. Yeah. So just for clarification for people out there, the report phishing button is probably not in the email that it gets sent out with, right? Like it's the extra icon on your Outlook appointment or there's the flag button. <laughs> yeah, it's not inside the email. That's kind of a way to make sure that you never fall for this. It just isn't in the email itself. <laughs> it will be in the mail browser that you're using to read the email. That's where you'll get that report phishing button. There is a report phishing button inside the email, it's probably alarming in and of itself. That probably is an indicator that you got something going on there that's not right. There's a red flag there, right? <laughs> Indeed, there is. Yes, absolutely. Okay, next one. <laughs> <laughs> That is one way to defeat phishing emails, right? By just not <laughs> opening any emails at all. <laughs> it's the greatest challenge in IT and security, right? Where, you know, uh, perfect security is not a system that's completely not usable at all, right? No one has access to it. They can't do any business at all. And perfect business agility is no security at all, no passwords, no nothing, right? So you can get in and do whatever you want. So we're always trying to figure that out. It's kind of funny to think about, well, if we just didn't read emails at all, then we'd never fall for a phishing email. But she probably wouldn't get a whole lot of work done either. So that's that incredible marriage between business and security there. Well played out, though. That's really funny. I mean, what are some common phishing attacks maybe that you could just like give a high level overview or I don't know, we've all gone through the cybersecurity trainings, right? But totally. you, maybe maybe there's some little tips that you can throw out there to like see phishing emails. Like what's the number one thing you look for, I guess? Yeah. And I think the first thing is the sender, right? In most cases, what I'm looking at is where did the email come from, right? And sometimes hovering over that button, you know, or that name allows you to see the actual address. It's not really coming from Amazon, even though it says amazon.com, it's coming from, you know, a uh, bad guy at mail.com or something, right? And you're just like, yeah, no, that's not Amazon for the 500th time I've received this email saying that my Amazon account is frozen. Boy, if it's been frozen, it's been frozen for a while. The other thing 
thing I think that's really critical is just kind of assessing the body of the email, right? What are they asking for, right? And in many cases, a phishing email is going to always create the sense of urgency, and they're always going to want you to open something, right? A payload of some sort, provide some information. Hey, there's this document you need to get access to. You just need to put in your username and password. Yeah, why is that, right? That username and password, they're just trying to steal it. I think the other thing to remember is tech support companies don't reach out to you. They just don't hire enough people for them that proactively call you or send you an email. It just does not happen ever. So Apple is not going to email you and say, hey, FYI, we noticed that your, your system's going slow and we want to come help. They do not. They certainly have call centers. You have to call into them. That's how you get the help that you need. So anything that's a tech support kind of reaching out to you, if you have not initiated that contact, that is almost 100% uh, phishing. You can go ahead and delete that. Yeah, because nobody's got time for that, right? Who's got yeah, the no, time? Nobody's got time for that. <laughs> yeah, there's just no scenario where, you know, Apple or Microsoft is reaching out, even by phone, right? They're just not doing that. That service actually costs money. I mean, having an actual phone call with Microsoft costs money. So there's no scenario where they're calling you out of the goodness of their heart to fix your tech support problem. I wish it was that way. It just is not. Well, there you go. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. All right, next one. Yeah. <laughs> I love these things. So on Facebook and on these other social media platforms, it's everything except for them saying, so what's your mother's maiden name? I mean, it is so crazy. The amount of information people put into these, oh yeah, I'm going to share all of the places I travel everywhere, you know, what my high school was. And they're not making that connection between, hey, I'm sharing information that typically shows up in questions for password resets. That's not a great scenario, right? So be very cautious about what you share online. I know you're like, but I'm only sharing it with my friends, but your friends have friends and your friends, friends have friends. And before you know it, it gets passed around and then, you know, an attacker has access to the information. I love sharing information with people that are close to me, especially in person. <laughs> so just be very mindful of what you put on social media because attackers use social media through a process called OSINT or open source intelligence. And that's how they start their attacks. They really do search your social media in hopes of finding out information that they can use to do an attack. For example, if they know you're traveling at a particular time, they might call a loved one and say, hey, so-and-so's in Bermuda and they've been in an accident. You've got to send us money now, right? That kind of scenario. Well, how do they know that you were in Bermuda? Well, they were on your social media, right? So by sharing information, we could potentially give attackers the kind of things they need to take advantage of a loved one. So always be mindful of those kinds of things and keep your uh, loved ones aware of things in person, not necessarily through social media. Yes. So yeah. Share all the information in the world with the people right. that you love in person. Right? Like in yes, person. that's right. Love them in person as much as possible. It is a great thing that we have social media so we can stay connected across, you know, great geographical boundaries and distances. But at the same time, personal information, things that could potentially be used for attackers, always share that information over the phone or talk to people that you love in person. That's kind of the best scenario to keep yourself cyber secure. Yes, I agree. And that's coming from someone that does a lot of work on social media. So <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, have to, I have to be careful about what I post. So absolutely. Right. Yeah. I, I love it. It's like, yay, have you gone to a hospital? And you're like, eh, I don't think I should share that information with you. Have you had surgery? How many tattoos do you have? None of your business. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to share that with anyone. Yeah. So that's fair. Right. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate your time. And I don't know, maybe we'll have to do another one of these. If people like them, comment below and give us your top takeaway or something like that. Sounds good. And thank you so much for inviting me. And this is a pleasure and I'd be happy to do it again.